Now, before we finish, we also have to register our game rules. And to do this, we scroll to the top. Oh, sorry, it's actually better to do it at the bottom. And we implement a game rules registrator. It's the same behavior as for the player. Public I entity registrator. Then override the register function. Uh, sorry, virtual board register override. No? All right. We need to also include game plugin.h. Once again, exactly the same as we did here game plugin.h and the registrator. Then what we'll do, register the entity with the default component. It's the exact same thing as we did for the player. Register entity with default component, the template parameter being C game rules. Let's not mess up the code here. And just call it game rules. There we go. What we also need to do specifically for game rules is actually register this with the game rules system. What we can do is simply grab a pointer to the game rules system right here. So we call GN. Oops. <laughs> okay, so what we do is we take the game rules system equals GN game framework get igame rules system. There we go. Now using this pointer, we can call register game rules with any name. What we'll do is do the same workaround that was done for the templates, simply grabbing the default game rules from the C bar. So p default game rules C bar equals gm p console get C bar and then sv underscore game rules default. This means that we could easily change the default game rules name directly from our system.cfg or game.cfg file. So simply get the string that is assigned to the C bar and register this to create the game object extension with this name. What we also want to do is set the final parameter, the third one, to false. This means that we have no Lua script since we are doing everything in C++, no Lua involved. Finally, we'll also add a game rules alias, which is fairly straightforward. So we once again get the default game rules name and then simply set it to the exact same thing right here. Nothing special to it. And then we'll register our game rules and it should be created. Oh, we noticed another thing here. Same mistake right here as we did with the player. So use the game object extension helper. So we say C game rules as the first parameter and then I game rules as the final one. Compile. And we realize that something is abstract. This means that there is a pure, pure virtual function we have not implemented. And these are the ones that come from the I game object extension interface. We'll cook quickly go ahead and implement these. Keep in mind that the sample game rules shipped with the templates are pre-made and will not have this problem. Now, what we need to do is set the current game rules. And this is a fairly simple measure. What we do is we get the game rule system, same way we did it before and it calls the set current game rules function and during init set that to this object and then we also have to add a destructor which then sets this to null and that's it by doing this we then have a finalized setup where we set the current game rules and create it and eventually create the actor what we can do is open the editor to test this out. And there we go. So we jumped inside of the editor, or technically the level, and uh, we were just able to view it, because, well, technically view it, because we don't have a view, and we also don't have any input. So I guess those are the exactly. next logical steps. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we'll do next.